Hey y'all, what is up? My name is Kimberly. For those of y'all that don't know me, I make videos about Germany, but no, I am not German, I'm American. So if you wanna hear my two cents about Germany, definitely hit the subscribe button down below. I post new videos every single week. And before we get started, please remember to like this video or dislike it. Either one helps the YouTube analytics, which helps me in return. So I appreciate either one. Today, we are going to talk about something very dark. I've never gotten this serious on my channel before. We're gonna talk about Germany's dark past and dark history with the Holocaust and how America today is dealing with it. So without further ado, get your cup of coffee and let's get started. So I don't know if I've been living under a rock or what, especially with my 97 year old grandma, but I did not know that a lot of Nazis are still being prosecuted to this day. And it really didn't occur to me that Nazis from World War II are still alive, even though I know that my grandma lived through World War II, it just still blows my mind that World War II was not that long ago. We talk about it like it was such a long time ago, it was our great grandpa or grandpa, but it really was not that long ago and people in Germany are still suffering the consequences of the war today. So before I start analyzing everything, I wanna show y'all a clip so y'all can have a lot of the context. Now to the deportation overnight of a New York man, officials are calling the last surviving Nazi collaborator. Authorities say the 94 year old came here in 1949, hiding his past as an armed guard in a brutal Nazi prison camp. He was stripped of his citizenship years ago, but he remained here in the US. That is until now, and ABC's Tara Palmieri is here with the story. Tara, good morning. Good morning, Paula. Yakif Pauli has been living in the shadows for decades. A man authorities say is the last known surviving Nazi collaborator on U.S. soil. Any regrets, sir? you have any regrets? Justice Department investigators say Pauli was complicit in the deaths of thousands of Jews during World War II. Authorities say Pauli lied to immigration officials when he first entered the U.S. in 1949. And it wasn't until 2003 that he was exposed as an alleged war criminal and stripped of his U.S. citizenship. Anything you'd like to say, sir, anything. The lead investigator saying in 2004, quote, during a single nightmarish day in November 1943, all of the more than 6,000 prisoners of the Nazi camp that Yaki Pali had guarded were systematically butchered. A judge ordered him deported in 2005, but no country would take him. For years, protesters gathered outside his home in Queens, demanding action. Members of Congress imploring President Trump to finish what was started, to send a message to the entire world that the United States stands firmly against anti-Semitism, bigotry, and hatred. The deportation drawing rare praise for Trump from top Democrats. He's a war criminal. He didn't deserve to live in the United States. He doesn't deserve to die in the United States. That was really intense. Um, something that I just don't understand is why the reporters are asking so many questions. I have a 97 year old grandma and she can hardly hear what I say say or what I'm trying to convey. So I'm highly doubtful that the man could even hear or understand what the reporter was asking. So I just think it made the reporters look a little bit foolish. So you would think all of the old Nazis are already gone. They've been terminated, they're dead, or you know, they have already been prosecuted, but that is just not true. Just a few days ago, a new case came in. So just a few days ago, a man from Tennessee was discovered to be a Nazi guard in a concentration camp, and he is currently being deported back to Germany. So they thought with the news clip that I just showed you that that man was the last Nazi left in America, SS guard, whatever, left from the Holocaust era, but we just recently found another one. And this man's name is Friedrich Karl Berger, so he was found guilty for serving as a Nazi security guard at a concentration camp and he is 94 years old. So after World War II, he first moved to Canada and then decided to settle in Tennessee. So after he was caught, this was his response according to the New York Times. So I'm going to look down because I'm going to read his response on my laptop right here. After 75 years, this is ridiculous. I cannot believe it, he said. I cannot understand how this can happen in a country like this. You're forcing me out of my home. <clears throat> so, 
You would think that the neighbors would be absolutely thrilled that he is being deported. He was a Nazi. He did horrible things during World War II. And like we saw in the first news clip, the first man was treated with harsh punishment and all of the neighbors wanted him to leave. But this was actually the neighbors' response to hearing about the deportation of Carl. So this is also according to the New York Times. In interviews on Friday, some neighbors said that they were surprised and saddened to learn that Mr. Berger was being deported. He had been a friendly presence who was proud to live in the United States, said one neighbor, who lived across the street from Mr. Berger for nearly 30 years and came to know him and his wife fairly well. So when I was researching this, I was really surprised at that response. I mean, he obviously was a well-liked person and just because somebody has a dark past doesn't mean that they haven't changed or anything like that. But I had so many questions after reading this and the first question was how did they get here legally? The first man did not get here legally. Apparently he lied to immigration so that's that. But how did this man get into the US? I'm still confused about. And what were the policies at this time? So. I find it really hard to believe that all this time has passed by and they didn't know anything about him and they didn't know that he wasn't involved somehow in World War II, especially if he's moving from Germany and he's German moving back to the US during the post-World War II era. So today what I really want to question though is what is the moral ethics of all of this? Strangely, I thought I would think that man, that man should go to hell. He is a Nazi, he's done horrible acts of violence, but I'm a little conflicted on all of this actually, and here I'm going to explain why I'm so conflicted. First off, the culture back then was so different, so I think that maybe a lot of people that became Nazis were not, did not have a bad heart or bad intentions, but they did it as a way to survive, which is not acceptable, but unfortunately for that era, I think a lot of people were selfish and wanted to find a way to survive, which doesn't make it right. But again, we do have to consider the cultural context. Also, we have to think about, did these Nazis ever recognize their wrongs? Because I bet for a lot of them, they could not recognize their wrongs or their racist ways. And they continued to have those prejudices for against people or if they recognize the anti-semitism in their heart so did they grow and did they have the same mentality neo-nazi is a really big problem in the world right now neo-nazi is the uprise of a new type of alternative form of nazis and they are often in disguise um so you won't even know that there's an organization or something like that that is a neo-Nazi group. A lot of the times they hide in different types of ways. The KKK is still a huge organization in America, but now they've kind of hidden and become smaller chapters and they're spread across America and they are not known as a KKK, but they are. And they're usually in really rural, redneck, back of the woods type of areas. And in Germany, recently, a shooter killed Tin and left a manifesto that he wanted to exterminate people from Asia, Africa, and Israel. But let's go back to the story. So essentially, this man probably has a few years left to live, and I'm not the only one that has expressed this type of attitude. There's a lot of comments that have said this man is literally about to die. And essentially now this man has absolutely no citizenship. Like America's like, no, he's not ours. And Germany is just like, no, he's no longer ours either. And personally, since he was born and lived in Germany until 1945, I think that he is more of Germany's responsibility. But I also get on the other hand that America did accept him in and granted him citizenship. So something important to know is that Germany has a lot of laws that can either lead to arrest or charges if the actions represent a Nazi type of sentiment. So for example, you can't name your child Hitler and even the name Adolf is highly frowned upon at this point. You can't hold the Nazi salute unless it's for educational purposes or you cannot deny the Holocaust. All of these are severe offenses. But 
Something I'm really surprised about in Germany, and I'm going to give a full disclaimer, is that I was not able to track the statistic down. So this was something that I read in a news report, but they didn't disclose how they came up with this stat. And that's really important to me, especially since I studied political science. Knowing the source of your news is so important. Don't take things face value. But if this is true, I am absolutely shook about this. So apparently there are 6,000 known SS members that have remained after the war and only 50 of them or less than 50 of them have been prosecuted, which is just insane to me. I don't know if these 6,000 live in Germany, but that's what it seems like, or if these 6,000 are scattered around the world, if they escaped or what happened. And I'm confused why if Germany knows that there are these cases, why haven't they done anything to prosecute them because if that is the case and with all of the policies it seems like to me that germany is more convinced of showing that they are against nazis rather than actually serving justice and it seems like they're just putting band-aid over a gunshot but again i do not know if this statistic is true and they do have a lot of laws against nazi sentiments so that's why i'm very surprised about this And essentially every country does that with its politics. They like to sweep things under the rug and put on a I am not this type of front. So here is my question is, should a lot of the focus be put on making 97 year old white men Nazis that are about to die pay the consequences? Or should the focus at this point be on bringing down neo-Nazis and their organizations and preventing a future blowout? because as we've learned the world doesn't learn from its mistakes so i also think it's very complicated when you have elderlies involved in the cases like when you have minors involved in the cases it's hard to just set a punishment and to have justice because a lot of times they don't even remember what they did they're just out of it with their minds the times have just completely changed at this point but by saying that, I'm not condoning their actions, and I think that justice should have been served, but I think it should have, should have been served maybe a long time ago, especially if the government, if both the U.S. government and the German government had this information that they were alive still. So my question is, what is the right type of justice at this point? I have a lot of questions and not a lot of answers, so I just really want to see what your opinion is about all of this. So we even saw this case, Oscar Growing, I'm pretty sure he was a German and he moved to Britain after World War II and he was a self-confessed Nazi and he was an accessory to murder in Auschwitz. Also looking into more research, I don't know if this is for the US too, but in Britain at least, um, they can be held accountable even if they did not do any murder with their own hands. So I'm going to go ahead and leave a survivor's response to Oscar Growing going to jail. Personally, I don't feel vengeance. I don't want to see him go to jail. It's too late for it. He's too old. And I do believe that the important part is for the law to be established. That was a pretty emotional response and it really touched my heart the fact that she's like he's too old at this point what what is it gonna do what good is it gonna do and i thought that was really graceful of her i could not even imagine having that response honestly so germany and america both have two very big problems with neo-nazism on the rise with the kkk growing with the small organizations all around the country and also with Germany and populist parties rising like the AFD. My question is, do you think it's too late to impose justice on the old Nazis? Do you think that we should even worry about it at this point since they are going to die after all? So should our focus be on the 97 year olds that are about to die or should we really put our focus on the neo-Nazi problem that we currently have? or maybe even both. I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts. I thought this was super fascinating and I didn't know that 
even though again like i said my grandma is 97 years old and she lived through world war ii it still didn't really occur to me that people from world war ii are alive she never really talked about world war ii that much so i didn't it just didn't really connect in my brain i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please remember to give it a like also definitely make sure to leave a comment down below i'm really interested in hearing your thoughts and engaging with what you think if you like this video and you want to see more please remember to subscribe to my channel i post a new video every week like i said i will see you guys next week ciao choose fish then